I'm calling this my overgrown toddler look. I'm going to the fair and I'm so excited. I have finished the Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake and oh my god. I just want to know if you did it. Just tell me if you did it. I'm not going to judge you. And I came home with a table. This is the vlog that is never going to end. Hello, hello, happy Monday. I am just about to go to my nail appointment and we are getting the upper lip waxed. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this moment for weeks but I thought I would just start off the vlog with today's fit because we're having an emo moment today. We're going back to my roots and I'm enjoying it. I'm looking, I'm looking not so great up here because I'm about to have a face wax. <laughs> So we have like no makeup on or anything, but this, I'm really vibing with so it. So I'm back from my nail appointment and to be honest, I've been back for quite some time, but um, I've been trying to crack on and get some work done. Not the most productive Monday morning I've ever had with me having a nail appointment like pretty early on, but I've just made myself a cup of strawberry tea because it's freezing today. It's quite nice outside. It's quite warm and sunny, but inside I'm just not, I'm not appreciating how cold I am right now. But as you can see, these are my nails. Let's get you a, a decent shot. It is of course the ultimate spooky month. So these are my spooky season nails this year. I really, really like them. And I had my wax as well so i'm essentially i'm a whole new woman which is what we want that was the that was the desired effect but i am currently reading just one book at the minute and that is of course the atlas six by olivia blake and i'm currently 122 pages into it so i'm just under a third of the way through and i am really enjoying this so far this one is a self-published at the time that i purchased it this is a self-published copy but it has been picked up by a publishing house and it is going to be reprinted early next year I think but it is an adult dark academia with magicians so it's multi-perspective we're following these six people who are the atlas six and they have been picked to kind of compete they essentially have to prove themselves to be allowed into this exclusive magical society called the alexandrian society and essentially become protectors of all of the lost knowledge in the world so we have six main characters from different backgrounds two of them know each other and are always kind of put into situations because they have similar abilities they're physicists they manipulate the physical realm and they're always put into positions where they have to not compete against each other but where they're very closely compared so they both end up in here we have a guy who's kind of running away from his past or specifically his father's past and he has the ability to see through illusions we have a woman called Raina who is a naturalist and she can control plants and then we have two characters with more mental abilities there is Callum who is like super rich and a little bit arrogant and he is an empath he can manipulate people's emotions and we also have Parisa who is a telepath and can read people's thoughts so where I at in the book we kind of everyone's been brought together it's kind of the situation has been explained and we're getting to know them a little bit as characters so not a whole ton has happened so far but i'm really really loving it i love the writing style in here it fits the like pretentious secret society kind of vibe that you get with dark academia and i'm really intrigued because at the moment i'm intrigued by all of the characters but i don't know enough about any of them to kind of say who's my favorite so nico who is one of the physicists seemed like a very different character when we read him from the perspective of libby who is the other physicist because she doesn't like him but when i read from his perspective i get a little bit of a different view on him and i'm more intrigued and he just seems like a very different character than i expected so i am very much enjoying this one and i'm hoping to finish it over the next couple of days ideally if i could finish it tomorrow that would be great but no pressure if not and i am still currently working on my digital journal as like it's a reading journal and um, because i have my spreadsheet i'm only really doing like brief notes on kind of review pages but i am also currently working on an illustration i'm just 
at the minute following some procreate tutorials so that i can get to grips with the program before i start to maybe do some other more exciting things but last week while I was illustrating and also working on my digital journal, I had an audiobook to listen to. I was listening to Fellowship of the Ring and I don't currently have one on the go. So I may just like watch YouTube and stuff, but I do have on my TBR The Murder of Graham Catton by Katie Lowe, which I'm going to listen to a sample, I think, of the audio for this and possibly start listening to the audio of this one. I will, of course, let you guys know, but if I do decide that I need an audiobook, this, I think, is the only book on my TBR that would be suitable for me to listen in audio because we all know I'm a picky bitch. That's my currently reading. Those are my immediate plans and I'm going to do another 30 minutes or so of work before I settle down for the evening and get some less productive things done, I guess. Hello. So we're doing another fit of the day. This one is not very glamorous. I mean, yesterday we did emo, which also wasn't particularly glamorous. But this one is a choice. It's a choice. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I just thought comfort first, comfort always, comfort only. So um, we have the sweet legs with the dinosaurs on. We also have fuzzy comfy socks and Lion King slippers. And the reason I'm sat on this <laughs> is because I'm about to take this downstairs to put it on the sofa because I transport it between the bedroom and downstairs for ultimate comfort. But I'm calling this my, oh fucking hell. I'm calling this my overgrown toddler look. You know, I'm not mad about it. It has a certain pizzazz. I've been out in New York City dreaming, wishing you were with me. Girl, you look so pretty going out tonight. I've been missing your smile. You should come and stay a while. Fly a couple miles, let's go out tonight Oh, you've been running through my mind all day Yeah, you give me everything I need Oh, anytime you need me there, I'll stay I promise it's just you next to me i need to put these in the recycling but um i save subscription boxes in case i have any particularly large candle orders that need to go out so until i pack my orders which will probably happen tomorrow they are gonna live there and they are being a nuisance right now but to add to that stack oh my god i've received this massive box from amazon and i have no idea what's in here but i'm just pretty much about to go out so let's have a quick look what in here. Feels like it's got lots of loose things in, so I don't know if it's full packing chips. Oh my god! Oh my god, who did this? This has, I don't know if you guys can see, it has, I don't know what this is. This is pretty hefty, whatever this is. But the thing that I saw, I was like, holy shit. This is chocolate buttons. This is an excessive amount of chocolate buttons. This is 10 times 95 gram bags of chocolate buttons. It's from one of my patrons, it's from Ash. Because every sprinkle tits needs her own mug. Interesting. Thank you so much, Ash, for the chocolate buttons. Like, I haven't seen whatever mug this is. But the chocolate buttons, oh my god. Bag the fuck out sprinkle tits, today is not the day. I will shake you with my arm, oh my god. I love it. 
I love it so much. I mean, trust Ash to get me an offensive mug. I love it. Thank you so much. I don't love these chocolate buttons. Wow, honestly, massive smile on my face. I've had a bit of a stressful work day. Nothing too terrible going on. It's just... I'm gonna be taking a couple of days off work next week because my best friend Brian is coming and we're doing some like spooky stuff and we're also going for drinks in York. I'm really excited about it. But um, I'm trying to, I have to make sure that everything's done before then, which means I have to condense all of my work from next week into a few days. And then this week I have to just like be extra on top of everything. So I've been multitasking all day and it was just stressful. So thank you so much, Ash. But I am about to head out. We're going to Hull Fair, which happens every year. It didn't happen last year, of course. And I'm so, so sad or I was so sad about it. Hull Fair is a massive traveling fair. It's, I think it's the biggest traveling fair in Europe and it is truly massive. Now, I used to love fairs. I used to adore them and I love rides and theme parks. I'm like a massive adrenaline junkie in those kind of aspects. The last time I went to Hull Fair, I realized that maybe I'm getting a little bit too old to go on all of the spinny rides now. So we're gonna go anyway. I just love the fair atmosphere and it's such a fall thing and we'll probably go in a couple of fun houses and stuff. Maybe play some games actually because I don't normally do the side games because they are a massive ripoff. But yeah, I'm going to the fair and I'm so excited. It is like truly enormous. Like I don't think I can accurately describe how big this fair is. So I had to kind of hurry my work. It's now 10 past five. We were going to go shopping before the fair because um, I need a couple of bits and Curtis needs some shoes for next weekend. But there's no, there's no time now because I had so much work to do. So we're going to go at the weekend instead. But the Atlas 6, I am currently 255 pages into it. So I have 130 pages left and I am, I kind of want to finish this today. If I finish it tomorrow, it's no big deal. I am aware that I'm just like massively failing my TBR at the minute because I'm not prioritizing reading. And that is a good thing. Like you guys may have noticed by the time you see this, I have dropped my video schedule down currently to two videos a week. And that is, I want to say it's a permanent change. Sometimes there will be three videos a week. My Bacopoli and my wrap up will still go up on like my first upload and then last upload day of the month. So if those fall in one week, there will be three videos. Um, if I have a single book review or a book diary, there will be three videos. But essentially I've been making three videos a week for four years and it's come to a point where I'm just like out of ideas and then booktube content is not as easy as it used to be now because if you think about things that we used to do all of the time, like TBR videos for a one week readathon, that doesn't really happen anymore. You kind of just do a vlog and then there used to be wrap ups for those one week readathons, which again, don't really happen anymore. So ideas are getting bigger which is great and I love creative ideas like that. It's just I can't realistically put those together and still upload three times a week. Aside from that, I think I might have discussed this in one of my most recent vlogs. I'm experiencing a bit of burnout right now. It's coming to the time of year where I'm a lot busier with work and candles and coming off the back of Bacoplathon, which was like a huge thing that was quite, I don't want to say like time consuming, but like energy consuming. So I always experience burnout around this time of year. So it's just good for me to take a step back cut back a little bit and then like we're out of the pandemic nearly like things are easing up a bit there's things to do so like I said I'm going to the fair tonight I think we're going to the cinema early next week to see the new Venom movie I'm seeing my bestest friend ever next weekend and we have like two types of plans on two consecutive nights so at the minute like it feels really good not reading as much and I am not reading as much right in this moment because of the burnout that I've been experiencing <laughs> essentially I'm just taking a step back being a little bit more chill for a few weeks just to recuperate and get my mojo back but I have been I feel a lot more creative having taken this time and a lot more energized which is great so I am aiming to finish this tonight we are headed out to the fair now so I imagine we'll be back around 9 10 p.m so I do have time but Ryan asked if we want to play Fortnite tonight which is also appealing. Anyway, my thoughts on this, I am really, really enjoying this. I'm still at a point with only 130 pages left. I actually don't know where the plot of this is gonna go. I know this is a series. I think it's a duology, but I may be misremembering, so please don't quote me on that. But obviously, like, when I talked about this, this is the Atlas Six, and the Atlas Six are the six candidates that are gonna be initiated into the society. However, one of them isn't going to be. So I don't really know if this book is going to end with the elimination, and then going forward into the sequel, there will only be five of them or whether if this is a duology there only being five of them is the end game of the plot. It seemed quite character driven but not in a way that's making me overly attached to the characters right now. I still don't trust a lot of them. We follow all of them because it's multi-perspective but you do get quite selective glimpses into what each of them is doing and the timeline is also a little bit all over the place because you may follow 
one character narrating across a two week period and then the next character maybe narrating another two week period but starting one week maybe into the narrative that you've just read over a two week period so it does hop backwards and forwards a little bit but not in a way that it tells you that it's doing it so you kind of have to pick up on where in the timeline we are based on the clues of what the character is talking about and it's not like an integral part of the story like you don't have to be super spot on with the timeline to know what's going on but it is just like a little bit disjointed not in a bad way but just leaves me with a like really just not knowing where the story is going to go which is incredibly intriguing once again that is not a bad thing I just I don't know and I'm intrigued and I want to continue I don't want to say it has horror elements in it as well but I keep needing to remind myself that nothing assumedly nothing awful is going to happen to any of these characters until we get to the point where one of them isn't going to make it through into the actual society I'll be unsettled I'll be on edge like oh my god it feels like somebody's going to jump out of the shadow and murder of this character right now but then it never comes so i'm definitely really really enjoying it really intrigued love the writing and i'm hoping that i can finish this one tonight and if not tonight then definitely tomorrow i've been finding all those feelings i lost back between the seats where all our favorite songs got paused I am about to start work. I am surrounded by about 200 candles right now and today I'm packing orders. I think I have 39 that need packing so I'm gonna be here for most of the day but I do have, I don't know where I put it, I think under this roll of bubble wrap. I have a parcel that arrived today and at first I was very confused, had no idea what this was but I think I know what it is now. I think that this is from Gavin and we always get a little parcel from Gavin at around this time of year and this is wrong way around. Frost Heart 3 by Jamie Littler. So Gavin always, I don't know why he does this, but he um, orders a ridiculous amount of copies of Frost Heart and sends them to all of his friends. So thank you very much, Gavin. I'm really excited to read this because I have read the other two Frost Heart novels and this always comes out around the time of Believathon and because it's like Gavin's favorite series ever, I do always read Frost Heart for Believathon. So if you don't know what this is, this is a children's story that follows this young boy called Ash who lives in this like snowy wasteland essentially. And throughout these snowy plains, there's a ton of communities. I can't. Are they called strongholds? And Ash lives in a stronghold. His parents left. They are pathfinders, which means that they travel between all of the different communities because it's quite isolated. And his parents left when he was very young and just didn't come back. So Ash actually has this ability. He can essentially sing. It's called song weaving. He sings and the monsters that live in the snow respond to his singing. So he's pretty much not allowed to do it and the elders of his stronghold find out that he can and force him to leave. He's exiled and he joins the pathfinding crew aboard the Frost Heart and finally sets off to find his lost parents. This isn't one of my favorite middle grade series ever. I mean, I only have one favorite middle grade series ever, which is Nevermore, but it's really cute. I love the illustrations in here. And let me just see if I can find one. And even though it isn't my favorite kind of story, I think that the reason why is that it is quite action-based, which generally just storytelling most of the time with the odd exception, that's not my preference, but it does still get me in the feels and I do tear up quite frequently when I'm reading this. I'm really excited to finish the series out and I think this will be the first middle grade series that I ever finished like since I was a child myself. So I'm really excited for that and I will definitely be getting to this in November for Believe It Not. Promises to So it's very close to midnight, but 
I finished sprints not too long ago, maybe about 30 minutes ago. And I have finished The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. And oh my God. So I gave this one four stars. It didn't get five stars, but I do think this has the potential to get five stars upon reread. Now this is a very character driven novel and the piece in throw, it's split into sections. I think there's, is there eight sections in total? Yeah, there's eight sections in total. And the very first section is this guy called Atlas Blakely, who is the caretaker of the society, approaching each of the six main characters and inviting them to be initiated or like, take part in the one year period where they can prove themselves to be valuable members to the society and at the end of it five of them will be initiated. So that bit was kind of interesting as an introduction to all of the characters and finding out a little bit about their backstory and also about the society. The next section we got a little bit more about the society and what this year would entail and then from there until pretty much the last section it's kind of slow paced and we're going through this following these six unreliable narrators who are all deeply distrustful of each other. They have to work together to succeed during this year but they don't trust each other because one of them is gonna be eliminated and not make it through. So they have to kind of distance themselves and separate themselves because they don't want to give each other an advantage but also still have to work together. So you're getting these perspectives and you're not seeing everything through each perspective. So you're in the perspective of one character and you'll notice other characters doing things that seem a little bit suspicious because you are viewing them from the, through the lens of somebody who distrusts them. And then when you're in that character's perspective, it's a very limited like period because we're skipping through so many of these characters. And I gave this four stars essentially one because of that slow pacing but during all of that slow pacing i was reading this book not trusting any of the characters and trying to piece together where this book was going and because there are so many perspectives because there's so much going on there's so many elements in here there's the areas of study there's characters that the main characters know that aren't in this society that play a part in their lives and their backstory and do crop up throughout the novel and there's also all these little acts in each character like pursuing their own kind of thing and there's just a lot going on but I believe that the purpose of it is to intentionally distract you but I spent so much time of this book being suspicious and distracted without any success of predicting like what was going to happen at the end of this book that when we got to the end and all of the plot twists and the reveals that I never actually fully predicted I think that this book was well plotted in hindsight but now what I need to do is go through and reread it again and knowing what I know at the end to take away all of the distractions and like see what else is going on in this book if that makes sense the ending was so good there were a couple of things it did that I didn't love like you essentially get the equivalent it's not quite but like something similar to a villain monologue or like an info dump towards the end where it's like this is what really happened and like goes through and tells you like all of the bits and pieces of information that you missed and wheeze it together in a way that like does make sense which isn't like my preferred method of storytelling but the actual plot that we have going on here because it seems very character driven but there is like a whole ton of plot that was like scattered throughout and comes together really nicely in the form of these twists and reveals at the end that i can no longer remember where i was going with this sentence <laughs> oh my god seeing as i have no idea where that train of thought was going i really enjoyed it i think i could give it five stars on reread i think that now that i know where this is going and where all of this plot has now come in that the sequel will be a five star prediction for me it's called the atlas paradox i'm slightly concerned now because it was supposed to on Goodreads it just says coming 2022 but now that this has been picked up by a traditional publisher I don't know if the publisher intends to publish the sequel in 2022 or whether it's going to be a case of it's going to be re-released in hardback through tour in 2022 and then the sequel is going to come in 2023 which is really sad because I want to continue and I saw on Olivia Blake's Tumblr that they were writing the second and third book simultaneously and the third one was going to come out shortly after the second one but I just I need to know more There's a lot to wrap your head around and because it's dark academia you have this level of convolution and pretension throughout here that you also have to wade through and I also think that I would gain so much more from it knowing the end game and which of 
of these like pretentious conversations were more relevant and figuring out how that ties into the plot but I really really liked this so this was on my bookopoly tbr it was for the fantasy prompt and it's also on my gothtober tbr to read a book that features mythology I put it in there on the basis that it's called the atlas six and atlas is one of the titans but there is a mythology referenced all the way through here because the alexandrian society is based on the library of alexandria and also like all ancient greek and roman and mythological references and all of that kind of stuff that ties into like the ancient and lost knowledges of the world so this one is done so glad i read it um took me a while but thoroughly enjoyed myself and next i put a poll on patreon i will insert it here like last week i'm not telling you what any of the emojis mean in case i want to reuse them even though i have changed them all this time apart from the baguette because um i don't know i wanted to see if people were drawn to different emojis and the puzzle piece emoji one and that is the one that has the least link to the book that it's matched with so the book that this is matched with is daughter of darkness by is it juliana hate juliana hager so i know i wrote her down as juliet juliet hager or something which is just really not her name daughter of darkness by juliana hagert this one is not on my bookopoly tbr it's also not currently on my gothtober tbr but i might be able to fit it in somewhere this one was my patreon pick for the month of october and it was chelsea's recommendation so this one is an indie fantasy romance i it's not available on kindle unlimited like i thought it would be but it is available on script so that is how i'm going to be reading it and i can't tell you a great deal about it because it has the super vague like typical fantasy romance synopsis so we have a i don't know if, he, if this guy is a mortal but we have a warrior who um has spent 300 years in the underworld as a punishment so if he's not immortal then he, he's almost immortal and a girl who is destined to kill a demon he's sent to protect her one of them is going to fail that is all i know about it and i will of course let you guys know when i've actually read some of the book what the actual plot of it is but um as i said it is well it's past midnight now it is seven minutes past midnight so i'm gonna go and get to bed i think i might set up my digital journal page for this before i go to sleep if not i will make a start and just read a couple of chapters but i'm gonna be sleeping pretty soon so i won't be awake long before i go to sleep i just finished my workout and i did like a 20 minute peloton ride and then 10 minutes of arms my arms are a little bit shaky so i'm sorry if my camera is all over the place but we went out it's like 8 30 ish now 8 20 8 22 we went out earlier looking for shoes like i said we were gonna do and it was a complete wasted trip not a single pair of shoes was found so we came home ordered everything online um i had a nap i fell asleep listening to an audiobook so i now have absolutely no clue where i got up to i think i worked it out but i forgot to tell you guys that yesterday i started the murder of graham catton by katie lowe and i started this because it's a thriller so i can listen to it on audio and i did want to start an audio book so i think i'm 68 pages into this i slept for like an hour and a half so i um slept through a good <laughs> five six chapters of it but this is katie lowe's 2021 release it is an adult thriller you guys know i love the furies i've just recommended it in a witchy book video so i wanted to pick this one up even though it is a very different story and this one is about a woman whose husband was murdered nine years i think prior to the start of this maybe longer than that 12 years maybe she woke up in the middle of the night because she could hear blood dripping and she found her husband dead somebody was convicted for it it was reported as like a burglary gone wrong and everything was like just over and done with that is however until a popular podcast called convicted opens this case up to dive into it and they are paying particular attention to the main character as i'm guessing in kind of a suspect role i'm only 70 pages into it so far enjoying it it is okay i'm a little bit disappointed in the audiobook actually because one of the main reasons that i wanted to listen to this specifically on audio is because it's about a podcast so i thought that there would be like podcast type sections like in sadie by courtney summers but alas there is not so it's kind of just an average audiobook but it's whatever and on script i'm currently reading daughter of darkness by juliana hagert i'm 120 pages into that i'm enjoying that one okay i'm not super into it at the minute but i'm like a third of the way through i think i think it's about 360 pages and it's feeling real slow so this one is indie fantasy romance and it's told in two timelines i was a little bit surprised because we open up in the present day timeline but it is let me just get a page count on it 372 pages and i'm 120 pages 
in and we open up in this present day timeline and we're following this teenage girl who's like almost 19 I think and she has been on the run for the last seven years and then we're also following this guy called Devon who is a demon hunter and he has been in is it purgatory he's been in some sort of like prison or hell dimension for the last 300 years because of something that he did wrong and he's being punished by the gods however he has absolutely no idea what it is that he actually did wrong and the gods have given him a chance to redeem himself and kind of fix the mistake he made but seeing as he doesn't know what the mistake is that's quite difficult for him but then we also follow a past timeline which seems to be two same characters hundreds I'm assuming of years ago where the female main character is the daughter of this family that own an estate and a farm and they were really rich but her father died and they've kind of started to fall into ruin and Devon is still a demon hunter and he has been assigned to watch over this family and the girl specifically because um the gods believe that she's evil and evil forces are at work so because they're struggling so much he kind of ingrains himself in the family undercover under the guise of like being a guy with amnesia and he starts to help them out on the farm and stuff but in the present day timeline so I think that they're the two main characters from the past timeline but they have no memories and every time Devon touches the main female character whose name I can't remember because she has several because of being on the run she keeps changing it I think she's called Kenna in the most present timeline but every time he touches her he has kind of like a vague vision of this girl but he can't see her face so I'm confused as to why he has no memories and then also she thinks that she's 19 years old she doesn't know that she's hundreds of years old well like he does so I'm I'm confused as to how these two timelines are coming together and also why neither of them have any recollection of the other one. Well that is where I'm at so I'm gonna go shower and hopefully spend the rest of the evening reading. I've been out a lot this week. I think I've been out four days this week which is unlike me. Because of that I haven't done a whole ton of reading and I'm also super tired. Like I was being a little bit harsh on myself after I woke up from my nap and before I worked out where I was like come on you need to get your shit together and get something done. Just like do something physical and <laughs> to be fair I accept that that was being a little bit hard on myself because I have been out a lot so I've done like a whole ton of walking this week and stuff but yeah I'm gonna get a shower now that my workout is done I feel like I can rest for a bit and maybe try and finish a book tonight that'd be good wouldn't it hello it is 10 past 2 and I have finished work for the day I wanted to get all of my orders done tonight and if I got all of my orders done well not tonight just today if I got all of my orders done today then I would have had five days off but then my printer ran out of ink so I guess it's not to be but that does mean that I've had an early finish today I've got some cleaning done upstairs and now I'm free for the rest of the day I do really need to clean the kitchen that's next on my deep clean list but I can't well I could do it but there's no point me doing it until I packed all of my orders because I pack on the kitchen table so there's no point organizing all of my candles putting everything away getting everything clean to then get everything out again tomorrow so we have an early finish and I don't really have much on today I think I'm going to do a workout Kendall Tool just added a 20 minute 2000s peloton ride if you haven't done Kendall Tool's 2000s rides before they are generally like occasionally she does some that are pop but most of the time they are emo rides which you guys may have guessed by now is my favorite genre and I've done all of the ones that she's done but she's added Mayday Parade to this playlist which is like my favorite band after the 1975 so I'm so excited to do that um so I'm gonna do that and then a 10 or 15 minute bar afterwards and then I think I'm gonna put my pajamas on I'm gonna get a shower I'm gonna put my pajamas on and I'm going to just be a vegetable for the rest of the evening and I'm really looking forward to it but I'm here to check in with you guys now because last night I finished Daughter of Darkness by Juliana Haygart and sadly I gave this one two stars was not a huge fan of it it was kind of like like the typical I want to say typical fantasy romance but obviously I read a lot of fantasy romance I read a lot of good fantasy romance so it's not really typical at all but it was just kind of in the vein of like 2010s YA fantasy that was essentially like paranormal or romantic fantasy. One of the big points against it was that it's kind of repetitive in that these two timelines like the past and present timeline are essentially mirroring each other so you'll have the same kind of event replayed in like both timelines to show the parallels between them and the timelines coming together when they eventually came together was just like super eye rolly. I didn't feel a whole ton of tension like sexual tension chemistry between the two main characters 
characters. It is, I would say it is YA. There's like a couple of sex scenes but they are fade to black and right in style tone. Age of the characters, the main female character is almost 19 and the guy is 21. So technically new adult age range but there's no adult content in here that wouldn't be suitable for a YA audience. I will say that it was a really quick read though. It was 360 pages but it is like quite fast to read through. It is available on script as well if you guys like to pick it up. Sadly this one was not for me but at least it's another book checked off my TBR. So this one was not on my Bacopoli TBR because it was my Patreon pick for the month of October. It was Chelsea's pick. But I did manage to get it onto my Gothtober TBR because I didn't have a book to fulfill the prompt of a book featuring omens. And this had kind of like dark prophetic visions in it, which I took as omens to fulfill that prompt. So I am not going to pick up another properly physical read at the minute, I don't think. I'm still reading The Murder of Graham Catton. I haven't read a whole ton over the last couple of days. I've just listened to like a chapter and a half, so I'm about 80 pages into it, I wanna say. I am enjoying it so far though. We are following this guy who was murdered's wife and I still cannot remember her name. Like my retention is terrible. But um, it's very clear that she's hiding something and it's interesting because it's kind of implied that she may have murdered her husband with the way that this podcast has reopened it and the synopsis says that they start to pay closer attention to her because they essentially don't believe that the guy who was convicted actually murdered her husband. So it's interesting because we know from the synopsis that it's going to take this shift where the podcast starts to look closely into her but so far 80 pages into this she has never said that she didn't do it. So she's withholding information from the reader. It's a little bit tedious in a way because I'm kind of sat here like I just want to know if you did it. Just tell me if you did it. I'm not going to judge you but I want this information but you don't have that. So I don't know at what point in the book that's going to be revealed whether it's like you guys know I'm not super familiar with thrillers and thriller tropes I'm just kind of along for the ride and it is proving to be an entertaining read so far although I will say I already said I'm disappointed by the audiobooks it doesn't have podcast elements some of the accents that the narrator does for the side characters is a little bit grating but um yeah that is where I'm up to with my reading I'm gonna go I think I'm gonna read for about oh 10 minutes 10-ish minutes and then get that workout in and then I'm just I'm just gonna be chill for the rest of the day. I'm so excited. Things begin to settle into view. A broad oak desk gets leather scratched and peeling up with made of yellow pages. I've just been out in the rain so the fringe is a lost cause today. I'm having a bath tonight and having like a full pound possession and I need to clean up my kitchen today so I've just like this is what we're working with but I just had to nip into town to pick up a click and collect order. It was supposed to be a next day delivery and apparently they tried to deliver yesterday and I wasn't in even though I was but I think I was in the attic so didn't hear the door. But the shop that they click and collected from is right near a second hand furniture shop. I am. And I came home with a table. So I've been looking for end tables for absolutely ages and they're just really expensive. Like why is small things that shouldn't cost a lot the most expensive? Like I can buy a whole last dining table for better value than I can get an end table. So I saw this when I went past the window of the secondhand furniture shop and it was 65 quid, which isn't cheap, but I paid 60 quid for, let me just, take you on a trip these these were 60 quid each and these are just not good quality and they're not real wood either so essentially let's just shuffle our way back when i saw this for 65 quid when i've been looking for an end table and it literally like it's the same color as my chimney breast it's solid wood as well I was like, I have to have it. So I'm gonna put it over here. I can finally get rid of this fold-up table, which was just supposed to be a placeholder, but it took me so long to get an actual end table that it's just ended up staying there. I consider that a bargain. And this is what I love about secondhand shopping. It's really frustrating if you're looking for something specific, but sometimes you'll just walk past a secondhand shop and you will find exactly what you need. And honestly, this has made my day.
going on for 1 30 a.m but i just thought <laughs> like you guys know that i'm gonna be staying up and finishing the murder of graham catton so i have like 100 pages left i think oh i've got less than that i have like 98 pages left of this but i will say that this had quite a slow start i've stopped listening to the audiobook because I think I was doing something where I couldn't listen to the audiobook, so I thought I'd read a chapter, and then I noticed that I'm enjoying it so much more by reading it physically, so I switched over to fully reading it physically, and I was on page 199 at the start of today. I'm on page 330. I haven't done much reading. I've had a reasonably busy day, considering I haven't done too much work, but I've just flown through it, and now I'm just, I need to know what happens. I've just been playing Fortnite with Ryan and Curtis and just thinking about wanting to pick up my book the entire time. And so I'm gonna go and get in bed and stay up for however long it takes me to finish this. It is pretty quick. Like I'm averaging about 40 pages in 25 minutes, so it shouldn't take me too long. But I have also put a poll up on Twitter that I'm gonna check the results for in the morning to see what I'm picking up next. It's only been up for a few minutes, so I can't say anything for sure, but when I like immediately, the baguette started to win. And I'm gonna tell you guys here that the baguette is Empire of the Vampire because Empire of the Vampire I believe is set in like a medieval France type setting so I was trying to think of something that's like French but obscure so we went with Baguette and I can't read Empire of the Vampire by the end of this week so we'll see how that goes but that's what's winning so far so of course I'll check in in the morning see what it is I'm picking up let you guys know um but yeah look at Ham how cute he is i gave him the chocolate buttons not to eat they're in the packet but i gave him the chocolate buttons because um i was about to just demolish the whole pack so i put them away from me but um he's such a little cuter pie a little sweetie baby and on that note <laughs> i'm gonna go get a good morning i'm looking like a human for what feels like the first time in a while but last night i did indeed stay up and finish the murder of graham catton by katie lowe and i ended up giving this one four stars i really enjoyed it i will say that the beginning was quite slow i don't know whether i was like my enjoyment was hindered by listening to the audiobook because as i've mentioned as soon as i stopped listening to that i was enjoying this book a lot more but it felt very three stars throughout the first half of this book until i hit just past the page 200 mark and i could not put it down now i am never satisfied by a thriller when i have all these possibilities of what could be going on running through my head there are some that are obviously like the weaker ones but generally no matter which one is chosen i'm always disappointed because i feel like it could have been better even though as somebody who doesn't write thrillers like there's no way that i could have possibly made it better it's just the i, I guess it's the expectations i go into a thriller with that it's going to shock me and blow me away and i will say that this had some twists that were uh, pretty well done like I felt satisfied by the twist that happened in here I did have a little bit of that dissatisfaction that just generally comes with me reading a thriller and I really wish that I could just not do this when I read thrillers but I will say as well that I think there was one twist too many in here and I didn't really like the epilogue of this one but everything up to like the last 15 pages I want to say so from page like 200 to the last 15 pages really really enjoyed I don't love it as much as I love the Furies I absolutely adore the Furies by Katie Lowe but it is still a solid thriller i really enjoyed it had tons of twists which is how i like my thrillers i like them to be twisty in terms of trigger warnings for this book as well i would say content warnings for domestic abuse and also suicide and suicidal thoughts is mentioned like throughout the entirety of this in various different ways relating to various different characters the main character in here is also a psychiatrist so um she specializes in looking after young patients who are suffering from things like eating disorders so there are mentions of things like eating disorders and also discussions of like mental health conditions and things like dissociative episodes ptsd and things like that pretty much if you read a thriller or a horror if you're going to pick one up and you are particularly sensitive to any type of trigger warning i would recommend that you look up a full list of triggers for thrillers and horror but i think i covered the main ones there <laughs> so for my bookopoly tbr i keep putting this down and picking it back up on my bookopoly tbr this one was to read a contemporary because it's set in a contemporary setting it is i swapped it out because i had i think i had the sea witch in for this one but because i failed the wicked villains reading vlog i swapped it for this and i also have it on my gotober tbr for the prompt to read a book that features murder but now that that is done and i have no work to do i am free from work until monday it 
is almost 11 a.m. I have friends visiting today, but they'll only be here like this afternoon and we're going to a scare maze this evening. So I think I have to go to the shop at some point and just pick up a couple of bits, but it's a two hour drive for them. So like the, I'm gonna have plenty of warning before they arrive in time to go. So I think I'm gonna do some reading and I just realized I did not bring the book over. So I'm gonna go get it. So here is the poll that I put on Twitter. And at the time of me looking at this, there's still a couple of hours left on it, but we have 53% of the votes going to the baguette. So I am indeed going to be reading <laughs> Empire of the Vampire by G. Kristoff. I was actually pretty convinced that I wasn't going to get to this this month because it is hella chunky. The text isn't tiny though, it's like standardish size, not big, not small. But there's 718 pages in this one. Ideally, I was gonna wrap this vlog up by the end of the week, but it feels, it really does feel like at this minute that this is the vlog that is never going to end. So this is an adult fantasy. I would say that it is my most anticipated release of 2021 because while we had a quarter of silver flames i'm glad that that was released but the akatar series was finished you know like i didn't need a quarter of silver flames so empire of the vampire which i expected to be released last year is truly the one and because of that i have been putting it off so this one is an adult grim dark fantasy from jay christoph it is about a man called gabriel gabriel de leon who is the last silver saint and 30 years prior to the most present timeline in this book the sun set and never came back up and since then the creatures of darkness i think it's only vampires but there may be other creatures of darkness in here have overrun the world and they're trying to eradicate humanity so gabriel is one of the last silver saints and they are a religious order i think who are tasked with fighting back against the forces of darkness and this book starts out where gabriel has been captured by his enemies and they are trying to get some information out of him so he starts telling them his life story so i think that this is told kind of near of the wind style or like interview with a vampire where we have him recounting his life story maybe through just this book maybe through the entire trilogy i do not know and it is on a medieval french backdrop i believe i heard the audiobook for this is really good i'm not going to start out listening to it i will give it a try if i feel like i need a little bit of a boost but i do definitely prefer to read physically than listen to audio so i'm going to go in with this physically i'm going to be starting it now and um i'll be doing a spoilery book diary on this so if you have read it if you want my full spoilery thoughts that will be coming at some point and for my bookopoly tbr this one is on there to read a fantasy so that being said i'm gonna go finish my drink and start my book i'm really excited it's always a bad sign always a bad sign then they walked into his office and they saw that his phone and his keys were sitting right on his desk I've literally just got back from York. Thankfully, I'm not hung over. So I'm going to put my pajamas on and get some reading done because I'm literally one chapter, I think, into Empire of the Vampire. So not doing too well, but I've had three and a half days off work now. I have a day and a half left and I have absolutely nothing that I need to do. So I'm going to put my pajamas on because while I'm not hung over, I didn't get as much sleep as I would like because we were out late. So I do just kind of want to get cozy. I mean, me in my pajamas, dramas early is that even a novelty anymore because you know what I've been like recently but I wanted to show you a little book haul. I only got one thing, so it's not really much of a haul. But while we were still getting ready, packing and setting off yesterday, my best friend Ryan went to Waterstones and he found the last two copies of the June Waterstones Special Edition with these sprayed edges. Now, June is a book that Aaron from Booked and Busy really loved. I'm not that bothered about seeing 
the movie to be honest and I wasn't even interested in this book until Aaron liked it and Aaron actually has some pretty similar taste to me when it comes to things like fantasy and sci-fi so I do want to give it a go. Is it about a desert and worms? <laughs> actually have no idea but I know that the reviews on this one are very mixed some people really hate it because it is a classic sci-fi I believe there's quite a lot of sexism in here but I do believe that it's um quite a hard sci-fi which I think I will enjoy that element so yeah Ryan picked up one of the special editions for me and honestly it's beautiful we also have um this under the dust jacket which is a quote from the book and some pretty m pages are there illustrations in here no there are not i thought there were but it's fine like I, let's be real i'm mainly in it for the braid edges aside from that the only other things that i got were a couple of bits from lush nothing too exciting my favorite moisturizer is the charity part from Lush because it is a super thick one and while I don't have dry skin overall the bits of my skin that are dry are exceptionally dry and this is a very like thick nourishing body butter and then I also picked up one of their Halloween bath bombs I do have the pumpkin and the bat but the last time I went to Lush I didn't see the ghost and this has some pretty cool color in so I think it'll make like really pretty rainbows in the bath and the last thing i picked up i haven't used one of these in a while but i have um psoriasis on my scalp which you guys have probably noticed that i'm sometimes very dandruffy in videos i got rid of it for a while and was managing it quite well but because my hair is purple the purple shampoo that i use which is the bleach london is it violet sky shampoo and conditioner the shampoo isn't very cleansing it's not very soapy at all so i've had to start using a different shampoo on my roots than i do on the purple bits because that shampoo is just really not cutting it for my scalp so i picked up my go-to shampoo bar which is the honey i washed my hair one honey i washed the kids is my favorite lush scent as well as the scent that i used for the book of fun candle this year so i picked that up to get back on top of my psoriasis because with the weather turning cold as well it is flaring up a little bit more and i'm not having a great time with it that was my little haul and now I'm going to sort Hammy out, see what he wants, and then get some pajamas on, get cuddly, and get some reading done. Hey, I bet you're sick of seeing my face by this point, aren't you? But I am seven pages shy of the halfway point of Empire of the Vampire, and considering that I only, like, I was on page 26 at 3 p.m. on Saturday, and I'm currently at page 352, so I have read quite a lot of this in quite a short amount of time, and I am definitely enjoying this one, and I will say that one of the biggest positives of this is that it is a very immersive story, and I'm not constantly flicking ahead, like, trying to see where the chapter ends, so how much longer I have to read in this reading session kind of thing which is a big plus in my book because I am generally like that like flicking to see when I can take a break so this book is pretty much exactly what I said it was this guy Gabriel de Leon he grows up in this impoverished town like his father's the blacksmith so he's not like extremely poor but there's nothing special about him or his family at all and one day he starts to exhibit some strange behavior and so his mother organizes for him to be taken to this religious order of essentially warrior monks where all of these people have the same abilities as him although there are some slight differences between them and he is taught the truth about his heritage and his birth and trained to be a vampire slayer now this book starts up where Gabriel has been captured by the vampire royalty and the vampire empress wants to know about something called the holy grail and so she has sent a historian to capture Gabriel's entire life story where he's telling this story that is going to be recorded for hundreds of years to come and he's narrating everything about his life everything about the silver saints as he is the last one there are no more so that religious order is completely gone at this point so they're trying to preserve it in history so the book is told in three timelines technically because we have the present day but the bulk of it throughout the life story is told in two timelines because Gabriel keeps hopping between two different points. We have the natural starting point of the story which goes through his early life, how he became a monk and the training and all of that stuff and then we also have the pursuit of the holy grail which I think is about 15 years after he was at this monastery and how it came about like how he found the holy grail, what it was, all of that stuff. So yes I am enjoying it, there are a couple of things that I'm not 
enjoying a lot about it one is the heavy religious presence in here now i have said before that red sister by mark lawrence reminds me a lot of never night if you like one you will like the other they have a very similar tone very similar atmosphere one is just in like a traditional assassin school never night and red sister is in a convent where they're training assassin nuns this also reminds me of red sister in a different way and it is because we have such a focus on religion in here i think that the religion is called the one religion and to me it reads a lot like christianity i know that there are multiple monotheistic religions i went to a catholic school i was raised as a catholic i am technically a catholic even though i'm definitely not practicing and i know that there are many monotheistic religions christianity islam and judaism being the more prominent ones that all worship the same god but believe different things about things like prophets and jesus but this to me reads very much like christianity and given the kind of historical european setting of this where we have like some france and we also have some scottish medieval characters in here as well i'm gonna go ahead and say that it's modeled a lot of christianity there's also parallels to like jesus and the virgin mary in here as well we all know that I don't like religion in books. And I can handle fantasy religion, but because I feel like this is so closely modeled off Christianity, it is putting me off a little bit. We do have some differences between the two timelines, like Gabriel in the present day, we know no longer believes in this religious order that he was a part of. He's completely lost faith, but in the past timeline, he's just getting ingrained in that. He's always been a believer because that's how he was raised. And he joins a, a an order of warrior monks. So of course he believes. So I'm enjoying the holy grail timeline where gabriel is a little bit more bitter more than the more religious early stages timeline but it still focuses on religion a lot and i'm interested to see what turn this will take if this turns into a like one god god is mighty god is holy it's all in god's plan kind of book i'm just not going to be impressed and i don't think it is going to but every time it leans in that direction I just get a little bit upset. The second thing about this is that it does have like, we all know that Nevernight has footnotes. A lot of people don't like it because of the footnotes. There is actually a version of footnotes in this book, but it's embedded in the text. So in Nevernight, you'll have like an asterisk. They will cut to a footnote about world building. In here, while Gabriel is narrating his story, the interviewer who is, I think he's Jean-Francois, will interrupt Gabriel and say, explain this to me as if you were talking to a child. Then Gabriel, who's just used like some fancy piece of fantasy terminology, has to stop and explain what that fantasy terminology means. Now, I actually prefer the footnotes in Nevernight for this because while Nevernight has been criticized for lazy world building by using these footnotes, at least it can be kind of wrote off as a stylistic choice in Nevernight, where in here it just does kind of feel like lazy world building aside from that we have jay christoph's signature kind of writing style in here which i'm obviously a fan of because i love jay christoph's books nevernight is one of my favorite series but there are a lot of similarities and parallels that can be drawn between this and nevernight in the writing style the heavy metaphor that doesn't make sense also pre present in here with all of the drama that that contains and we also have just like lots of quirky swearing characters that make up swear words which is fine it's fun but i think because i follow j christoph on all social media i'm a fan of j christoph i've read all of his books but three i think at this point i am super aware that i'm looking super critically into this and seeing all these things really clearly because they stick out like a sore thumb to me because i'm so familiar with his work and also his presence on social media but that being said i am enjoying the story i like the character of gabriel i'm really interested to see how these timelines are going to come together and he turns from this like young almost naive boy that is so full of faith to this older bitter battle-hardened warrior i'm also interested to learn more about the vampires i'm really hoping that the actual i want to say the truth of the plot turns away from religion that's like literally my own personal preference but i'm really enjoying it so far and i'm finding it really absorbing so that is where i am at with this i've nearly finished work because all i have to do today is edit this vlog and i can't edit this vlog completely because it's not finished so i'm going to um just wrap up the last couple of bits i need to get done run a few errands and then see how much of this book i can read tonight good afternoon so it is like real early afternoon it's quarter past 12 and the microwave is beeping if you guys can hear that i'm reheating some leftover mexican style pasta bake for lunch and one of my 
my favorite things about having time off towards the end of the week is that it means no restock and when we have no restock it means that the beginning of the following week is also a pretty easy ride for me as well so it is quarter past 12 and i've already finished my work for the day i've packed all my orders i need to do a couple of little bits of admin and i'm about to have lunch but after that i am going to try and finish empire of the vampire today i'm on page 460 still not obsessed with it but still enjoying it like a lot i'm on page 460 and there's 712 ish pages so i've got about 250 pages left so it's going to be a push i'm not going to rush it if i don't get it done i don't get it done but um the end of the week is going to be chaos in terms of work so i'm taking this opportunity like i could make candles today but i could also do it tomorrow so i'm just gonna leave it till tomorrow and i'm gonna focus on getting this done and have a good old day because after this it's like christmas chaos all the way until mid-december in terms of work so i'm just gonna <laughs> take the opportunity to relax while I can. So I did it. I finished Empire of the Vampire. You know, I pretty much blasted through this in five days and I'm pretty impressed with myself given how slowly I've been reading recently. I, I gave it five stars, but it only scraped five stars by like one point. I put it through Core Pile, which for those of you who don't know, is a rating system created by Gia Book Roast where you rate the book on like loads of different things like writing, atmosphere, all of that stuff. I still think Nevernight is better at this point i just enjoyed nevernight more but like with nevernight it's a thing where like you have to fight your way through the first 150 pages of nevernight before you get to a bit where it actually gets good this was like that for me except it was a much longer period it was like 400 pages before i was fully into this story it is a truly truly miserable story we're following gabriel who right at the beginning of this in present day has been captured for the murder of the forever king and we know he's about to be killed and we also know at this point that he's a bitter man like he doesn't care if he lives or dies he's pretty much like done he's chill like he's accomplished everything he needs to he's okay to die and then we skip to when he's young and he's being initiated into this monastery this order of the silver saints where he's just so young and full of hope and essentially this series is chronicling how we get from one to the other and i did enjoy the slow build in the end there are moments in here that, like i didn't cry or anything but there are moments in here that made me feel a little bit sad i can't lie i will say that because we're in this split timeline where we have the pursuit for the holy grail and also is early years at the monastery i feel like that is a little bit to this book's detriment i definitely understand why it's done like that so that you get all of the backstory of gabriel in his youth before cut into the more relevant story of the holy grail but you're not spending as much time with the characters because there are characters present in one timeline that aren't in another so when bad things happen when we're coming to like revelations i don't feel like it's quite as impactful as it would have been if we'd have grown closer to these characters throughout the entirety of the book now the last time i checked in with you i had a lot of complaints not complaints but just personal preference wise the religious nature of this book was really getting me down <laughs> it's really annoying me because we all know how i feel about real world religion kind of glorified I want to say in books and I will say that this came to a satisfactory ending on that front for me and by the time I got to around the page 500 mark I wasn't bothered by the religion anymore I was kind of sinking into it um it is a fantasy religion at the end of the day it is heavily modeled on Christianity I want to say which is the part that bugged me about it if it was a completely fantastical religion then I would not have been as bothered at all but I actually really like the discussions about religion in here and seeing both sides of the coin from the perspective of a believer and also from non-believers and with my personal views on religion as well it was interesting to read from both of those perspectives i really like the character of gabriel i adore dior and i also adore aaron i would say that those are my favorite characters from this book even though the writing is not 100 i gave the lowest mark on core pile with an eight the atmosphere in here is unparalleled we have these dark spooky like vampiric gothic vibes i was like fully immersed in the story on this world from the very first page and i cannot fault the atmosphere of this book at all i will say that the conversational jokey tone with the narration style of gabriel telling his life story added a bit of levity to the book which was i don't want to say it was necessarily appreciated but i enjoyed the contrast of that with the kind of miserable nature of this story and i also really liked the vampires in here they gave me very much like you know the original dracula movie from way 
way back when, like 1950s, maybe even earlier, they gave me those super dramatic vibes that's present in that movie. And I really appreciate that as well. So overall, loved it. Five stars, not like high five stars. Might not even make it into my favorites of the year, but at this point, I feel like I'm getting a lot more critical when I'm reviewing books and I'm holding them to higher standards and I'm a lot more reluctant about what I say is my favorite. But on the flip side of that, maybe the books that I'm reading are not the books that I should be reading at the minute, but it was very good. I'm so glad that I read it and I really, really enjoyed it. But at the minute, I do prefer Nevernight better, but it has the potential to grow, I think. I'm going to be rereading this before the sequel. I typically do with J. Crystal books I want to be refreshed before I get into the next one and I did definitely enjoy it enough to do that as well the fact that I'm not like raving about this book could be because I've read from J. Christophe before I kind of know what to expect I predicted some of the main plot twists and revelations in here and I'm excited to see how the ones that I didn't predict unravel in the future, the ones that are kind of still ongoing. But I kind of know what to expect from Kristoff, and for me, this was nothing exceptionally out of the ordinary from what I already know that he tends to do in his book. So nothing took me by surprise, which I feel like maybe this book has taken a lot of people by surprise and that they maybe haven't read anything quite like it before. But I do think it's a solid, solid Kristoff book, and I'm really excited to see where this series goes. So it's done. I finished Empire of the Vampire. This was on my book called TBR to read a fantasy. I've also put this in on my Gothtober TBR. The only space I could get it to fit was the prompt to read a book with LGBTQIA plus rep. So I did manage to get this on the Readathon TBR, and we can finally end this vlog. I mean, it is Wednesday now, so not only is this vlog late ending, I'm late starting next week's vlog, and I'm going to I'm going to try and participate in the last remaining days of the Halloween Smartathon. So please do stay tuned for that if you are at all interested. But aside from that, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far. If you have, please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys next week. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you go where nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.